Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. We're here today with our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday, where today we're going to take a little sidestep on our traditional body transformation-based show and go over exactly what I do when I get sick. So this has been by popular request, many people on the Cabral House Calls asking for different protocols. I've already given my children's protocol many, many times. And of course, I'm happy to link that up as well. So if you're looking for a children's protocol that I use with my two daughters, you can head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1671. And then for all of the different products and all the different things that I do, I will also link those up today at stephencabral.com forward slash 1671. I do have to let you know before we do start the show, I have to give you a standard disclaimer. Any information that I am giving you today is for educational purposes only, not to be construed as medical advice. And this is what I would personally do, not necessarily for you. This means that we are not treating any disease, any medical-based conditions, curing, diagnosing, or any of those other things. So today I'm going to share with you exactly A to Z what I do when I get sick. And I also always like to share with you this, that maintaining and having a healthy body does not mean that you never get a cough or a cold or any type of sickness. It's actually far from the truth. Sickness or a cold is nothing other than your body's response to fighting off some type of antigen, pathogen, or some type of virus, bacteria inside of the body. It's totally natural, and the fever that you see or the inflammation that you see is actually a healing-based response. A lot of people misconstrue a fever or mucus in the nose or in the chest as an actual cold itself. Believe it or not, that is your body fighting off, creating the mucus so it can create more of those white blood cells to move the specific area, and in response to the inflammation that is going on with the healing-based process. Now, of course, you want to help your body along in the process. And of course, if a fever gets too high, above 103 or so, for children and definitely above 105 or so for adults, it's at your discretion to bring down that fever. But what I want to talk about here today is what you do at the first signs of getting run down or getting a little bit of a cold. Because I know that this is something that's going to be a topic of, uh, I would say, hot debate this fall and winter. So before we even get there, let's make sure that we're prepared. So one of the nice things that I would say is this, is that we all have the opportunity to have our own natural-based pharmacy, and that we'll use that with an F, inside of our house. So that means we don't have to wait to go out and get the products that we'll need if we are sick, and at that moment, we need them. So it's something that I definitely urge people to do, especially this fall. Even your favorite online shops may experience delays, and the reason is that more and more people are shopping online, that there are not enough delivery people out there right now, and they might be delayed a couple days. So the truth is that whoever the company may be with the best intentions, they just might have a couple of days delay because they're delayed overall with FedEx, UPS, United States Postal Service, etc. Still no fault of their own. I even know that, you know, that big online company that begins with an A, they're experiencing delays right now. They're basically as if they're in holiday season, there's so much back order for them. So just interesting, just want to note that because what I like to do is that I'm always stocked. I'm always ready so that if I were to get a cough or cold or my daughters do, well, we already have all the products that we do need. Better to have them, better to be safe, right? So here's what I want to share with you. No discussion on what you would do when you get sick would be complete with what are you doing every day not to get sick, right? That should be a bigger part of the equation. So I'm going to dive right into that. But before I do, 
Keep in mind, what's normal for coughs and colds every year? About two to three is what's considered normal. Two to three colds per year. Recovery time, no greater than a week. If you get a cough or a cold and you recover within three to four days, that's a good sign. I would say a great sign that you have a strong, healthy immune system. Because what happens is over the course of about 72 hours, your body's ramping up its own production of antibodies or white blood cells that are going to be able to naturally fight off any of the pathogens inside of your body, right? So that is a great sign. It's not if you get sick, but it's how quickly you recover. If it takes you weeks to recover, well, you know, every once in a while you get a cold like that, every couple of years, right? But for the most part, under a week, ideally under five days, if you recover, really good sign that immune system is healthy and strong. That means it has everything that it needs in order to function properly, and it's not too weighed down on a daily basis by inflammation, poor food choices, not enough sleep, etc. So let's take a look right now. What do I do every day to try to keep my immune system and my entire body with a healthy level of inflammation, a healthy level of hormones, a healthy level of blood sugar, all of those things? Well, I'm always using my daily nutritional support, which is a full methylated B complex. It has all of my multivitamins in there, all of my minerals, all of my daily detox components like sulforaphane and uh, reduced glutathione. And it has 15 grams of a, of a plant-based protein. So I'm always doing that. I'm making sure my protein's at a good healthy level, but not excess where it might create inflammation. I also use my daily fruit and vegetable blend on a daily basis. That's 22 organic fruit, vegetable, and superfoods. And it comes without all the sugar. So basically, I just put it in water. I mix it up. I actually do this outside of my smoothie. I prefer it on its own. And it's really easy to mix with a little bit of sea salt and a little bit of lime. That's the way that I prefer to do it. Sometimes I'll put in a little bit of raw manuka honey. That's how I'm definitely starting my day with that. I do omega-3s every day. And the reason is that I don't eat fish four to five times a week. And if you're not eating fish four to five times a week, well, then I, I haven't tested a person yet that has the proper omega-6 to omega-3 balance. So pretty simple. You can use a teaspoon a day of omega-3 support or two soft gels a day. Very, very simple. And then, of course, I'm using a daily probiotic support. Now, some people will just take two upon waking with their daily fruit and vegetable blend or their lemon water in the morning or their tea, whatever they'd like to do. Some people will do one in the morning and one at night on an empty stomach. And some people, like myself, we do better taking them at night. There's no brain fog. There's no issues like that. Better with the gut. So I take mine before bed. Pretty simple, but that's what I do. Again, this is a show about exactly what I do because people have asked, so I'm happy to answer this question. I use enzymes on a daily basis, sometimes with lunch. I don't use them with my smoothie in the morning. It's not that you can. And then I'm always using them with dinner at night because dinner at night is typically my nice meal. I sit down with my family. It's a little bit more complex and that allows me to break that down to an easier degree. And I've actually noticed a big difference. There's no extra water retention. There's no bloating of the stomach when I use the enzyme. So I use one or two at dinner. Pretty simple. And then uh, for the most part, I do a very small dose of the liquid melatonin before bed every night. It allows me to fall asleep very quickly. It's in and out of my system very quickly. I feel no grogginess the next day, no change in my dreams. And I'm only right now using about a half of a dose, which is about one gram a night. So very small. And certainly my body still continues to produce its own, but I get great benefit from that. And certainly I've, I've seen it help with my healthy levels of inflammation too, and healthy levels of cortisol and serotonin. So there's so many different benefits, but that's what I do. Again, you might not do that, but that's what I do. And then on top of that, which is my daily foundational protocol, I'm doing my vitamin D3 during the non-summer months. So during July and August, I'm getting a tan more days than not every single week, but I'm using it essentially then September through May-ish. Yeah, September through May, I'm using vitamin D and I use four drops per day of ours, which is 4,000 IU. You can use the vegan variety or you can use the liquid variety as well. Okay. So what else am I doing besides that? Well, essentially every single day I'm using vitamin C. When I don't need a bigger dosage, I'll use the full spectrum vitamin C. Pretty simple, just two capsules a day of full spectrum vitamin C. I get vitamin C from uh, the functional medicine or orthomolecular version, which is ascorbic acid. But then I also get it from uh, hesperidin. I get it from certain bioflavonoids. I get it from acerola berry. I get it from hibiscus. So it's a really nice Ayurvedic blend with um, now state-of-the-art orthomolecular medicine. I love that. And then when I need a bigger dosage, I'm using the alkalizing vitamin C. And during the wintertime, I'm using that every day. 
pretty simple. I just mix it with that my morning drink before my smoothie. Basically, that's the drink before, when I wake up. That'll have the lime. That'll have all the good stuff in it. And I'll just throw in the alkalizing vitamin C. And it's two and a half grams per serving. So pretty simple. I mean, I'll do a half a scoop for 1.25 grams, or I'll do the full scoop at two and a half grams if I need it, if I feel like I'm getting run down. So really simple. That'll get your bowels moving for the morning as well. If you're someone that needs to help with that in that department, it certainly will help with that. And then for me, this isn't necessarily for everyone, but I use the full immune protocol every day. I actually use 25 milligrams of zinc on top of my daily nutritional support every day. So my body does really well with a little bit more zinc. Okay. So that's what I've, again, the today's show is really about finding what works for you. And what I've realized over the years is I do much better with zinc on a daily basis taken at dinner. I have my DNS in the morning is 15 milligrams. And then at night, I have 15 milligrams if I'm taking my balanced zinc, or I have 25 milligrams if I'm taking my FM zinc, which is just straight zinc. So keep in mind, that's what works well for my body. My body depletes itself of zinc at a a far greater degree. Part of it is my constitution, my body type. Part of it is I'm exercising on most days of the week. And also that my body uses it for my immune system, for histamines, all sorts of different things. So it works really well with my constitution, um, helps with inflammation, helps with the hormones, and it works great for me. You might not eat extra zinc on a daily basis, but for me, it's a game changer. How do you know how much zinc you need? Well, if you ran a minerals and metals test, you would actually look at your zinc levels compared to copper. And if your zinc and copper were in good ratio, you'd take a balanced zinc, just one capsule every single night at dinner. And if you had a little bit higher copper, then you would take a little bit extra just straight zinc. That's all. So pretty easy. And again, you can test these things. Very, very simple. So that's what I do on a daily basis. Of course, I add in other things. There's no doubt about it because I'm always experimenting with extra things. One thing that I do typically use every day that I, I would be remiss if I didn't share with you is the Advanced Collagen Support. I just think it's a great product. It's good for my gut. It's good for my immune system. It's good for building up my body. So I really love that product. I mean, you could put it in your coffee. I just put it in my smoothie. It's just one scoop. It's pretty simple. And then um, twice a year, I use um, two bottles of one bottle twice a year of the healthy gut support, which has extra glutamine, extra zinc, really good for the gut. I do that once during the basically beginning of winter, November, December. And then I do one in the March area as well. So six months apart, I just get an extra healthy gut support. Really feels good on my gut. There's no reason why you couldn't take it every day. But again, I'm, I'm always using different supplements. So there's a cost associated, but there's also a level of how many supplements do I want to be using? So there's all, it all goes together. And then I'm, you know, I'm always experimenting with anti-aging-based protocols, using some resveratrol, using different things like that, that I'll talk about in the future, because um, I'm using a specific line right now that we're working on, that we're formulating. So I'm happy to share that in the future. But for the most part, that's what I do on a daily basis. If my body feels like there's extra stress, I take an activated B-complex on top of my daily nutritional support. So there's always things that I'm I'm working into my plan, but that's what I'm always using. Okay. So then what happens though, if I start to feel my body get run down, if I start to feel like I'm getting sick? Well, believe it or not, I actually begin to do a lot of lifestyle things before I start to do extra of any of my nutritional supplements. Because remember, lifestyle has to work with the nutritional supplements because you don't want to just rely on nutritional supplements and not your actual lifestyle. So right away, what I start to do is if I feel my body becoming run, run down, like a little dryness in the back of my throat, a little congestion in the nasal passages. What I do is if I wake up with that, I fast for that day. So that means that I will take the day off from exercise, especially if I'm looking at my HRV drop by like 10 points and I feel that in the back of my throat or feel it in my nasal patches, I'm still going to work, but I'm taking the day off from exercise. I'll still walk. But what I do is I fast through breakfast, I fast through lunch, and I have dinner that night with my family. So that allows, what does it do? I mean, what is fasting really allowing for? Well, it's enabling your body to not use any energy for digestion. So it's letting your body say, we're going to use all of this energy that we might have used for exercise, that we might have used for digestion, and we're going to focus in on the immune system. We're going to focus that energy towards fighting some type of pathogen or something that might be in your body that your body needs to remove. So that's what I do. I also will try to do a sauna. So instead of my workout, I'll try to do a half hour sauna. Now, I'm fortunate enough to be able to have a sauna right at my house. But if you don't, you could visit a local YMCA and do one of their dry saunas. You could visit a local wellness center 
do an infrared sauna, uh, whatever you'd like. And you want to get a, a good sweat going. That good sweat will help with detox. But also remember, heat destroys viruses. Heat can just can help to detox the body. So really, really nice thing to think about. So I'm a big fan of that. The only time I won't do a sauna is if I have a fever. But a fever typically doesn't come on the first day of a cold or sickness, right? It can, but I don't do a sauna, which would raise my internal core temperature if I already have a fever. That, that to me, is not going to make sense. On those type of day, well, I might do an Epsom salt bath instead, although I'm not really a bath kind of guy, just to let you know, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it, right? I'm just talking about what I do specifically. Okay, the other thing that I'll do during the day is I will drink ginger tea. I'll drink hot, spicy ginger tea with a little bit of Manuka honey in there. And when I talk about some honey in there, I'm talking about a half to one teaspoon. That's it. And I'll have that one or two cups when I would have typically had a meal. So one or two cups at breakfast, one or two cups at lunch, one or two cups mid-afternoon before dinner, and then I have dinner. That's it. It's a day of fast. It's a day of resting. If you want to learn more about this, check out my podcast on the One Day Diet or the Reset Diet. This is something that I created many years ago, really based on just working with in a real world clinical setting. And um, it's something that I believe it or not, I do every single week on a Monday. Uh, every single Monday is, is a fasting day for me. But oftentimes I'll do shake for breakfast, shake at lunch, potentially shake mid-afternoon if I'm doing a workout, and then a normal dinner at night. And the shake is not, it's no calories at all, really. But what it does, it helps open up those detox pathways and it allows me to drink more fluid. So that's what I'm doing in terms of lifestyle. Now, in terms of supplements, what I do is this. If I feel something coming on, again, it depends on the degree because I might just up my zinc I might just up my vitamin C and I might just up my vitamin D. And how much more do I do? I double it. That's it. I just double it for those next few days as I start to feel myself getting run down. And I also make sure that I get in bed by 9 p.m. and I sleep until 6. So that's usually an hour extra sleep than I would get because at my typical bedtime is 10 p.m. Wake up about 5.30 a.m. So that for me is perfect Monday through Friday and then on the weekends, I'll try to sleep in an extra half hour or so. So that's, that works, again, really well for my body. So back in the day, I need an extra hour more sleep than that. So some people will need seven, seven and a half hours. Some people will need eight. Some people will need nine hours. So for sure, on the weekend, I try to get eight, maybe even a little bit more. And then on the weekdays, I get seven and a half. And again, that works great for my body and my schedule. So what I start to do, though, is if I start to feel myself, okay, now I am getting run down. I feel the cold coming on. I use oregano oil or I use GI balance capsules. So for people that don't like the taste of oregano oil, you can just take a GI balance capsule, one at breakfast, one at lunch, and one at dinner. If not, you can simply use three to five drops of oregano oil under your tongue. Yes, it will burn. So if you'd like, you can mix it with some water and just swallow it down quick. So again, this is for me. I'm not saying it's what you should do, but this is what I do. And then also there's a great product by Simbucus called the Samacol Elderberry Syrup. And again, you can use this three times a day. And for what do I do? Well, I do two teaspoons to potentially three. I just use a little plastic medicine cup that it comes with. And I do that three times a day. So what I'm doing is uh, when I look at it as every six hours, that's basically a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If it makes you a little nauseous, then take it with food, right? Simply, simply take it mid-meal. No problem at all. You can take your herbs mid-meal. And for GI balance, I can't recommend that enough. Mid-meal, never before the meal, never at the end of the meal, or you might get a little bit of that acid reflux. Okay. A product that I love that I use, I mean, I would say I use it every spring and every fall anyway, is a product called Hist Pro. One of my favorite products out there, so underrated. Nobody, I don't even talk about it, but it contains quercetin. It contains a little bit of NAC. And what this does is it really gets the mucous membranes and the secretions moving. So that's one of the reasons why I love it for sure. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I, I use it is because my body's prone genetically towards mast cell production or histamines. Again, yes, I have it un- under control, but that doesn't mean I'm not more prone to it. So it's a little extra vitamin C. It's got quercetin, a good dosage too, 400 milligrams. It has stinging nettles. It has bromelain, which is a really nice enzyme to help eat up uh, pathogens in the body. And then a little bit of NAC. So I'm, again, I'm a huge fan of the product. I'll use that two to three capsules a day. Big fan. I'll use that prophylactically as well. But anytime I get a little bit of mucus secretions as well. All right. And then again, like I told you, I double my zinc. I double my vitamin C to get to five grams a day. And uh, I double my vitamin D3 to get to 10,000 IUs. I don't do that for more than three to five days, but that will give me a little immune boost. I don't change any of my daily foundational protocol, which is the daily fruit vegetable blend, 
the um, daily nutritional support, the omega-3s, the probiotic, the enzymes, the melatonin. That never changes. If I need to get into a deeper sleep, sure, I'll add a little bit more melatonin. No big deal at all. Okay, so now let's say that a progress... That's usually all that I need, by the way. I don't need a lot. And how long do I use those? Well, I use them actually for two days longer than my body has already recovered. Because every once in a while, your body's actually not fully recovered. You go back to normal living. You don't get the same sleep. You start getting stressed again. You start exercising too much and you relapse, okay? This is why I allow my body to recover for an extra 48 to 72 hours and continue taking the nutritional supplements even when I am better. Now, I will tell you that back in the day when I used to get sick, it would take me two weeks to recover. It was, it was not good. I won't get too deep into that. Many of you have heard my story before. Every two weeks getting sick, taking two weeks to get better, not good. Now, my body's healthy. My immune system's robust. It's strong. And I'm, I'm, again, I've worked on that. It w- did not happen overnight. So now my body gets better in three to four days maximum. I mean, that to me, I never get worried about being sick anymore because I know I'm going to recover quickly. But then I, I just keep the protocol going for a couple extra days, right? I keep my um, vitamin C, my zinc, my vitamin D at that for about five days. I'll take my oregano oil. I'll take my elderberry for that period of time. I'll take my Hispro. Super simple, super easy, right? If somebody wants, if I want to take a little bit extra NAC, I'll do that. If the mucus secretions are thick, 600 milligrams, two to three times a day, basically breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's it, right? That's when you're using them. Now, let's say though, for some reason, every couple of years, this progresses to something more. And I did get that this past January. It hadn't happened. I mean, I'm, telling, I'm talking about years, years. But here's what I do. If I feel that it has moved down into my lungs, or if I feel it's getting deeper into my chest, here's what I do. I take a product called Clear Lungs, or the Amulain Lung Extract or Lung Complex. And what it does is it contains actually herbs that have been used throughout the years to give your immune system a little bit of a boost and help clear those secretions. So it's things like black pepper, black cherry bark, cassia, mulain, licorice root, ginger. And these are taken in tablet form, okay? These are traditional Chinese medicine herbs, also use an Ayurvedic medicine, but these are specifically traditional Chinese medicine. And I use those whenever it's getting into the lungs. And at this point, I don't fool around at all. I use big dosages. So again, this is what I choose to do. I do three tablets three times a day. I really don't mess around because I don't want to be taking any antibiotics. So what I do is I make sure that I use what some of my uh, mentors in terms of herbal medicine used to call a heroic dose. So I use heroic dosages. And I'm going to take stronger dosages three times a day. There's another product called Wellness Formula that contains echinacea and other great products. So Wellness Formula is another great one. Again, how do you know which ones is best for you? Well, in time, you will experiment with certain extra add-ons. These are things that you use every day, but you'll find out what works well with your body. And for me, licorice root, and again, the, the science is behind it, and mulain extract, these things help to kill viruses and they help to really clear those lungs and congestion. And my, my body's always prone to the lungs, right? Why? I don't have adenoids. I don't have tonsils. Postnasal drip, when I'm sleeping, goes right down. It gets a free pass. There's no adenoids. There's no tonsils. It goes right to the lungs. So what I need to do is just make sure that I'm clearing that on a daily basis. So that's what I do. I'm using zinc lozenges or I'm doing zinc th- spray. I do zinc spray all throughout the day. Not sometimes. I do it all throughout the day, probably 10 times throughout the day when I feel it in the back of my throat. A favorite product or favorite company for these heavy hitters is Nutribiotic. And I use their throat spray, but also I use their nasal spray. So I'll use that three times a day as well. Three sprays in each nostril. I tilt my head forward. I let it go all the way up into my nasal passages to make sure I clean it out. Five minutes later, blow my nose, I get it all out. So that's what I'm doing. Nutribiotic nasal spray, and I love the throat spray as well. Sometimes I'll pick up an extra throat spray. A propolis and herbs based one is really nice as well. My girls use a propolis throat spray. And then that's what I'm doing. And then I ride it out. I ride it out. Extra sleep, sauna, not a lot of exercise, walking, easy to digest meals. And I just keep working the process, working the process, working the process. And I get well. I mean, that's it. I think my longest cold was maybe like two weeks, right? And that was it. And that was years ago. So if I ever need to, I have one more thing that I pull out, and that's called citricidal drops. We use them as part of our CBO protocol. If we ever find a little bit of overgrowth in the gut that shouldn't be there, but we use citricidal drops. Those are by Nutribiotic. And I will do three to five of those drops twice a day to three times a day. And that's what I bring overseas as well if I ever need to. 
those are the strongest. Those are heavy hitters. Yes, GI balance is super strong, and I continue to use that. But if I ever need it, then I'll use those citricidal drops. They are bitter. They don't taste good, but they do what they're supposed to, and they go after that... uh, that goes after yeast, it goes after bacteria, it goes after a lot in the side of the body. So I'll use that. And again, I use these things for two days, even after it's cleared up. But I can't tell you the last time I've used citricidal drops. It has been many, many years. So that's what I do. Of course, you can use other products as well for viruses. I did a whole podcast on viruses. I've talked about colloidal silver. I've talked about what have I talked about before there? I've talked about monolaurin. All of those things can be used, but I just don't use them. I don't need them, right? None of these things. Here's the biggest thing I want to share with you is that I never use one extra product that I don't need. I don't know if that was a double negative or not. So again, I just want to reiterate, I don't use anything extraneous. And I always talk about that with wellness clients as well. The goal is not to use more. The goal is always to use less. So I do a nice daily foundational protocol because of lab testing that I've realized that you can't get these things through your diet. You're just not going to get them consistently on a daily basis. So that's that. And then I choose living in New England. Maybe if I lived in Florida or I lived in Southern California, I wouldn't do an immune protocol for eight months out of the year. But I do because I live in the cold. I live in a climate more not as conducive to great health. So that's what I do. And, and it keeps me healthy. Pretty simple. And then whenever I need my extras on hand, well, they're sitting there in my supplement cabinet, which is, has lots of stuff. So that's that. But I also, again, focus on no extra stress during these times of not feeling well. I eat lighter foods. Sometimes I even do a second smoothie for lunch instead of a bigger lunch. Easy to digest. A lot more high antioxidant foods. And then, of course, I'm working on my mindset because I don't like being sick just like the next person. So what I do is I wake up and I tell myself, listen, okay, no big deal. You have a cold today. You're going to go to work. You're going to work through it. You're going to be fine. You're not going to do any extras. You're going to get to bed earlier. And it's going to go away faster. And that's it. And you'll be better in a couple of days. So you're always working on mindset. Because remember, if you're someone that used to have a current health-based condition like myself, you could see yourself sliding back into that mindset of, oh no, here we go again. But no, you do not let that slide in either. You will get well. Here's the truth is that You've gotten colds in the past. You've been sick in the past. You will get well again. So this is what I do myself. And as you saw me move through the process, you'll begin to see I actually just covered the de-stress protocol, right? So I live the de-stress protocol in everyday life, but I also then just gave you the diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance, supplement protocols backed by science, and success mindset. So that's why I use the de-stress protocol one way in everyday life, but then also I ramp it up when I need to and my body's not at 100%. If you don't know what the de-stress protocol is, check it out inside of my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. It breaks it down step by step. I truly believe this is how to get well, stay well, and live longer, stronger for life. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, um, this is something that was asked by popular request. And of course, I'm an open book. I want to share with you exactly what I do. You'll heard some of the products that I formulate in there and many products that I don't, because the truth is that I want to be able to open source health. I want to make sure that you know that you have everything at your disposal that you need for your health and your family's health. And uh, again, I just believe that it's better to have it on hand than have to search for it when the time comes. Thank you so much for tuning in. And of course, if this was helpful, I'd love to hear from you as well. Let me know in our Facebook group at cabralsupportgroup.com. Let me know on Instagram in the comments today. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1671. And of course, if the show was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, We also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help 
over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel. <laughs>